Welcome back to the channel. Today, I have a awesome E63 AMG M157 matte black wrapped wagon. Say that 10 times fast. Any Hoosier. Today, I'm gonna have Rusty take all these plastic covers off and we're gonna dive into this engine to see what happened. It looks like oil just erupted all over the top of the engine, started smoking everywhere, made some crazy bad noises. We met this customer a while back, but we actually went on an AMG cruise with him last year. And I took two seconds while we were on that cruise and I popped up in the old cap and I, and I told him, I was like, unfortunately, this thing has the defective first generation timing chains for the bi-turbo. They're split length instead of single length. And I'll show you guys that today, but it's a common problem for those chains to stretch and Mercedes did make a revision in the later 2012. So we're gonna show you that. And yeah, hopefully Rusty can tell us why the oil erupted. And we plan to do a compression test, a leak down test, and bore scope all the cylinders. So we're really gonna find out what the inside of the motor looks like. And we're gonna check the cooling system and everything because head bolts are an issue on these as well. The threads in the block actually being pulled out of the head bolts and then you either need a block or an insert put into the block. But anyway, that's enough of that shit. Let's get started. All right, guys, let's take a peep at our M157 here. You can see it just blew up all over the hood. And that is oil. So we have oil all over this. It looks like it comes from maybe the dipstick area. Everything's covered over here. It's all over the shields. It's on the coolant reservoir. So it looks like it's coming from multiple places and it's all blown over here. This thing is covered in oil. Rusty is going ahead and putting our fender covers on and our battery charger. Thank you, Rusty. You're welcome, sir. We're putting on the battery charger because first things first, we're gonna scan it. We're gonna scan it, see what all codes are in it, see if the computer can tell us anything that happened, and then we can check on the code itself, the freeze frame data. So when that code was set, we can see you know what mile an hour, what RPM, and that can help us determine when the failure point happened at what RPM, what engine load. It's just a little easier way to help diagnose what is going on. But oil. Oil. But we're going to take all these covers off. I'll get one of my helpers to clean it all up so when we do put it back together, it won't be so dingy. I hate seeing the beautiful car like this. I have oil everywhere. And then once we're done, everything on the top here, checking the cylinders, all that stuff, we'll put it on the lift, check everything underneath as well. But we wanted to get a head start on this and check out as much as we could. And check out this wagon, man. Tell me that is not just the coolest car, but also that wagon. So we have a W211 wagon and a W212 wagon. I gotta say, I love these two. And they always come in as groups. So we always get like two or three of every car in one time. So we have that wagon, the W211, and now we have the W212 wagon. And last month we had all the coupes in here. So this is cool. And don't we love the W212 wagon? Look at this thing. It is just too cool. Sorry, I'm trying to show you guys as much footage around as you can, but we are limited in, sp in space here. We need a bigger facility. I keep telling Rusty this, but he's yet to build anything. Just kidding, I'm working on it. We have the schematics planned out. Concrete gets poured next month, so big things coming. Dyno, another tr uh, truck lift, four post, and some more AMG lifts, so stay tuned. Big things coming for the shop. All right, what do we got, Rusty? Misfire on cylinder six and eight. And it's a random misfire code. So let's see if we can find out when it was happening. So this is the freeze frame data I was telling you about. So it happened at idle in park. And which code was this one? Cylinder six, so we'll try number eight and see how that looks. In reverse, maybe he cleared the codes initially. Maybe. To try to get it to- um... Yeah, but I think misfires are constantly refreshing. Oh, okay. Because it, every new misfire, it's gonna refresh the freeze frame. So it makes it kind of difficult. Well, what's the trans codes? Yeah. Bunch of can codes. So you probably had the battery good dead. All right, so we're gonna clear those codes. And not all the time you're gonna get a smoking gun when you check the codes. That's why it's always good to appropriately start fresh and diagnose everything. You know, we're going to pull the plugs out, check the spark plugs, check the coils. We're gonna check the cylinders, compression test, leak down test, check the cylinder wall, see how that looks, see if there's any oil in the cylinders. And we're gonna start with that. But six and eight being on the scan tool, we're gonna double check those. Check 
take the dipstick. Oil is missing. I would say most of it. That's not good. He did mention that this was consuming a good bit of oil, but you think it was coming? <clears throat> you can see all the oil in the valve cover on top here. I mean, it's soaked around the cap and pushed out of the dipstick, so. All right, guys, that is a split link. See how there is two links, two individual links put together instead of one? That's a split link setup, and these... If you have these on the bi turbos, 11 to 13, some of them I accidentally got them in 13, then they need replaced. That is a problem. They do stretch, they do cause issues. And unfortunately, when you do that, a lot needs to be changed. The phasers, I believe even the cams, all kinds of stuff. A lot has to be changed when you change the timing chains. And these are your injectors. This is a high pressure fuel system. Cool packs are down here on this side. So we're gonna take those out. Pull the plugs out and see what we got. Judging by how this engine runs, pulling it in, there was no noise and all that stuff. So I, I'm going to say, if I had to bet money on it, that one of these cylinders are, are, are washed out, rings, rings are done. I think, I think we're getting 100% blow by on one, if not two, uh, cylinders on this engine. And we're either going to have to rebuild or replace this one. But... Regardless, we have to rebuild it because of the timing chains, but I think we have a separate issue with some blow-by because they pushed out of the oil cap and the dipstick tube. Okay, yeah, so here's another issue with these engines. All of the cam sensors, there was a recall, I believe, on the actual sensors, but it pushes oil out and then into the harness like this and then wicks up through the harness and will actually find its way in an ECU. Since we've seen that, the oil wicking right here out of this cam sensor. Rusty, pop that off there and see if it, the oil made it back to the engine ECU. <clears throat> pop it off, please. Well, you get paid, so no. Pop, oh. it, pop it off. All right, I'll get it off there for you. Thank you. <laughs> but since I'm a decent human being, please works too. Please. But if you don't do it, you're not getting paid. Oh, sh mm. And if you can see, that is oil inside the harness. See how it's all shiny? Is it, can you see it in the ECU? I can't see it. Here, let me get it from this side. All right, so you see in the back corner of that ECU and on the prongs, that is oil. Oil wicked into this harness all the way till it got into the ECU. That is another bi-turbo common failure point. And you can see in the, the back here, you can see all the oil on the pins. You can see it laying in the back. So timing chains. These are the split link timing chains that are common to stretch and fail. These cam sensors right here. But oil wick up in through them to the harness to where it all it comes all the way into the back of this. This car, unfortunately, seems to be a prime example of all the issues that a bi-turbo can have. You can see the oil. All right, now Rusty's gonna continue to pull the spark plugs out. I did not think they were this long, but they were longer. The boot is stuck down there, hook it out. That is a bi-turbo coil pack. 276 part number though. So it must be used for plenty of other gears, different engines. Oh, oh got that boot out, I heard that one. That is the boot. Looking like it needed to replace. What was the mileage on this one? Mm, I didn't know, you can turn the key on. Or just open the door, I'll show you. Yeah, we'll check. Just a Actually, you're you're being boring. We're gonna check mileage. Let's go check mileage, guys. And the mileage is survey says only eighty-seven thousand miles. Woo wee! Only eighty-seven thousand miles in bad chains. The cam sensors are leaking and oil everywhere. My heart goes out to you, first generation by turbo guys, um, just like the first generation M156 guys. There's always something. You know, I guess we just have to say the E55s are the top dog. They don't have these kind of problems. The M113K wins again. Get them boots out of there. I told you they, they are gonna need replaced. That is That was obnoxiously in there. These newer engines just create so much heat and they use the most brittle plastic. I mean, it's obviously not broken, but thank God we upgraded to this new parts holding pan. I will take a moment and say this real quick. Shout out to Philip VRP. He has called me on every video we've done and congratulated me and said, man, that, that was a good watch. That was a good video. So, and he said all his staff are watching it and playing it in the shop. So shout out to VRP. 
My guys at VRP, thanks for watching all the videos. Even videos that don't include their parts. But you know I can't do an AMG build without all my VRP parts. So when we build this thing, we're going to be putting some VRP love in this. Maybe some turbos, some downpipes, some VRP boost. Also, since we're doing shout outs and we're working on AMGs, shout out to Alex at Legit Street Cars who called me super early this morning, which was super, super early his time because he's in uh, central uh, time zone, whatever, and wherever Chicago is in the time thing. I think it's like one hour behind us. But uh, he called me this morning, you know, again, giving me some YouTube tips and, and tell me uh, some ins and outs of some things that I didn't know I was asking about. So just again, huge shout out to everybody who's taking the time to be like, either congratulate us or help us all along on this journey. Cause it, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's a lot more work and we're staying, you know, way past our normal time. So we can still do the normal amount of work we do. Plus make these videos for you guys. So, you know, my heart goes out to all of you guys. I appreciate it. I'm probably just gonna start tearing up now because I've been waiting for this award forever. No, I'm just I was thinking of like a Miss America thing or something. But anyway, thank you guys. We appreciate everybody. We love doing this. We do need uh, more subscribers and more views. So if you like this content, now's a good time. Hit that like button, leave us a comment, subscribe because that helps us keep doing this stuff. All right, guys, Rusty's gonna be pulling out the spark plugs, and this is a 12 point, 14 millimeter socket with a good wobbly extension on here. And when you take them out, nothing special, just take them out. But when installing M157, M278 spark plugs, you have to do the torque procedure. So we'll do that at the end of this or when we rebuild this, but just know this is not a, like a regular run of the mill, throw some spark plugs in, hand tighten them. It is a specific torque procedure so that the angle of the spark is timed correctly. Pay attention to doing the spark plugs. 87,000 miles, original plugs or replaced? Mm, judging by the rest, original. Yeah, they're probably due at like 90,000 miles. 90 to 100, yeah. Yeah, so it's like right, right on the cusp. It's probably all it needed. This car is super clean other than the defects. I'm seeing like all the harnesses is where it's supposed to be. All the clips, all, all the factory zip ties, like everything's where it's supposed to be. So this thing's like unbothered by foreign hands. I think this was all still original. Ooh. That's just Bosch. They have been changed. That is not an original plug. That is a good plug. It's a Bosch, but look at that. Which cylinder is this? Five. Four? So Five? This, yeah, this could, that could be what happened. What's that? Injector melted a piston because they weren't clocked correctly. So we're about to find out. Say, say that again a little louder. <clears throat> so this could be what caused it. These have been replaced and they may not have been clocked correctly like Craig was trying to explain, but failed. So what you're looking for is the electrode on the spark plug. That is what needs to be clocked a certain direction so that when the direct injection injector sprays in here, it doesn't bounce off of the spark plug. And what happens is when it does contact the spark plug, it creates a hot spot in the piston and will melt a hole through the piston, which could be what happened here, but we'll have to wait and see. I don't think a hole was melted through the piston by the way it's running, but we'll see, man. The bore scoop will tell all things. And we got to do the smell test. It honestly smells like it was running lean before oil was introduced into the cylinder. No, not a, not a real fuel smell. It just smells like burnt, like real burnt, but then, then the oil also. Like it would smell, like there's no oil in this, I would just smell like a lean, lean smelling plug. You guys might not know this about me. I, I'm a disabled veteran, I have a lung disease. So as I lost one sense, I picked up another and I have superhuman automotive smelling abilities. And yeah, that's, so that's what was going on right there. And I probably got stuff all over my nose now, but it's okay. Hmm. Plug numero whatever two is in Spanish. I'm getting notes of 93, a little bit of misfire, and a hint of vanilla. I, I smelled the vanilla too. Did you? I yeah. just thought, I just... It ain't hiding from I, me. I didn't believe it. But now, now I believe it with you smelling it also. I've seen better days. So this is one of the misfire plugs. It is extremely covered in oil. I don't even smell fuel. Let's see how dark that one is from here. Yeah, it's not. It's probably the best looking one so far. Yeah, look, look how dry the threads are. So that cylinder, to my guess, probably look a lot better than the previous two. The last one on this bank. 
And this one is also very damp and oil soaked. All right guys, and Rusty pulled out the other bank and here they are. He said the oil on this one that looked like it leaked down from the oil cap and made a big mess over there. It was not from inside per se, but look at these. These are just as toast and they all look like the threads are coated. So not good, not good. A pile of cool packs. He said this one broke coming out. Just that deteriorated from being weak by oil and heat. So you see it covered in oil. All right, guys, it's getting late. We got all the spark plugs out. Rusty got the bore scope out. We're going to go ahead and bore scope six and eight since that's the ones we had codes for. And then we're heading out for the evening and we'll be back first thing Saturday morning to take a good look at this. Well, I don't see a hole, but mm -hmm. she is wet though. In the morning, we're going to check, we'll bore scope every single cylinder, and then we'll start compression tests on every single cylinder, leak down, we'll write all the information down, and then we'll go from there. But that, that cylinder definitely has oil on it. I ordered a really nice uh, bore scope, a three-angled bore scope, so we can see the sides and the bottom, but that won't be in until next week. Oof! Carbon? I would say there's bad things in that cylinder. Looks like a bunch of oil or carbon. No, it looks like a black hole. Look at it. Whoa. I think it's an optical illusion. But I think there's bad things to be found in there. That does look trippy. Mm-hmm. All right, let's just, let's just spin this real quick. I can't leave you all the guys on that note. We're gonna spin <clears> the crank. We're gonna drop these pistons down a little lower so we can get a better visual before we go home for the night. Luckily, you guys won't have to wait long for the whole process. You just get to keep watching and find out, but I have to wait till tomorrow because my buddy, Duel from the United States Army, who served in the Army with me 10 years ago, is up visiting from the Carolinas. He also recently went on the trip with me to Daytona that you guys saw that I, I did a long tow and picked up a customer's engine and stuff. But yeah, this is my guy right here. Zachary Duell, we had a hell of a time in the army, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, that's him. Big YouTube fan right here. He's my guy. We're taking him out to dinner tonight. All right, Rusty's gonna turn the crank. And you can already see our piston going down. I think I'm gonna have to clean that lens off. That one's just freaking dirty, dude. Ooh. And that right there, look at that, don't move it. That is scoring on the cylinder. Look at that, oh god damn, right there, don't move it. Look at that, that's it. That is damage to the cylinder. And that is what, look how, look how, oh, can, oh look how much oil. That's it right there. That big mark right there. Yeah. Look how much oil is coated and burnt onto that. Oh man, look at that. Go back to that spot. That was incredible that you got it, that perfect. Oh, look at it. That looks like rug burn. We got rug burn in this cylinder. Yeah, bad things. Look how just melted popcorn on that piston because there's so much oil. And seeing damage on the sleeve like that, that will cause that every time. When, when there's imperfections on the cylinder wall, and the piston rings don't perfectly glide up and down the cylinder walls, sliding the oil on and off the cylinder. It can't lubricate, and when there's a gash in it or something, it's just gonna, all that pressure is gonna get past the piston rings down into your crankcase, pressurize your crankcase, and explode oil out of the engine. With the customer telling me that it's been using quite a bit of oil for a while, this was a small problem that's now turned into a major problem. This engine's gonna end up needing sleeved or new cylinder walls. Which one's this? Six, I'll put it back on six. That's back on six. Look, what is that? Another one. The same kind of like rug burn, man. Definitely washed out with fuel on this cylinder. You think the chicken or the egg? Well, either way, this engine's scrambled. <laughs> <laughs> How did you come up with that just that quickly? I don't know. That was good. Ah. Oh. Not to make light of the current situation, but that was hilarious. I said chicken or egg, meaning did the injector cause the, the bad ring in cylinder situation or the cylinder cause the, the fuel situation because of not having a good burn in the cylinder. But we're out for tonight. 
in the next scene, you'll see me tomorrow, hopefully fresh, ready to go, and we can further diagnose this, but that's a, that is a smoking gun. That, that will cause the issue that happened, that will cause the oil to erupt. That's not like crazy damage, but the, like we said, it ran and it's just pushing a lot of oil. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Hey guys, welcome back. So it's a fresh day. We got a fresh new bore scope to try out. This has three cameras on the end, so we'll be able to see straight and two on the side. So we're gonna get a little bit better view of what is going on in there. Let's fire this puppy up. All right, so I already got it shoved in there. You can see we are at the top of the piston. So we'll press, we're gonna switch it to the side camera. Man, look at that cylinder wall. Does not look the best. Look at the carbon on top of that. That's a valve right there, that real black spot. Look at the carbon on top of that valve. All right, Rusty, go ahead and put us in the, the next one. All right, look, pull it back up a little bit. Look at the valves again. Look at the oil, everything burn up. And look at how thick the carbon deposits are on that valve. All right, push down. Oh, man. That is not supposed to look like that. That is marks and gashes in the cylinder wall. We got one clean, one dirty valve. Explain that, Rusty. Look at all the dirt and everything beyond the valve. That is the intake valve, so all the oil coming in is making it look shiny. The other one's the exhaust And the exhaust valve. valve is it being burned up and being it's, sent out. It's caking up. Yep. Wow. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Wow, this camera's really good. And there's just so much carbon and oil being burnt in these cylinders. Oh boy. And this is the, de definitely the cylinder that was damaged the most. Look at all of that. Six had the worst sidewall damage, now eight you can tell is even worse. And these are the two that are, had the active misfires. All right guys, I don't know about you, but I wanna know compression of six and eight. They seem to be the worst. You ready to check compression? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, Rusty is going to install this right here. Some of you know, some of you don't, but this screws in where the spark plug goes and is sealed. And then it has an adapter that hooks onto our gauge that I'll show you. We will hook this gauge up to it and that will tell us how much pressure is in each cylinder. What's your guess, Rusty? You're doing the very first one, right? I was on six. No, let's do, let's do uh, the one before it. We're gonna do every one on this bank, but I'm dying to know six and eight but we have to know what the rest are to compare them. A good engine, every cylinder will be within five to 10% of each other. Anything past that, there's issues. All right, cylinder number five, first one on this bank, let's go. All right, about 200 there. Let me write that down. Cylinder five was 200. I took one of our handy dandy business cards that also are a good note card. Rusty is moving it to cylinder six. And this is the one of the ones that was misfiring and the ones that had real bad carbon deposits. So this should be interesting. Hey guys, don't forget these awesome new pins. They're stolen. Please return to Modern Masters Auto, 105 Beddington Road. How cool is that? Very, very cool is the answer. All right, ready when you are? All right, we're gonna do that one more time. We have an astonishing 50 PSI. That's not enough. That is not enough. So I'm not real good at math, but I don't think 50 is within 10 or 20% of 200. Let's continue. So with 50, six being 50, what do you think eight's gonna be? With all that oil and carbon in there? 30 or zero? I think well, eight had a, eight had a bunch of scoring right too, right? Yeah, eight, eight was all scored. Eight was worse. I think six is worse. You think six? I think eight is worse. I think the oil is from. I think there's bad things in eight too, but I think the oil is from puddling in the back of the intake and it's sucking it in. I don't think so. This ain't that kind of intake. So what do, what do you think? What do you think the PSI is going to be? In the back one? Yeah. One ten. One ten. Yeah. All right, and I'm thinking less than six. So here's the deal. It's either better than six or less than six. He thinks better than six. I think less than six. So, but in the meantime, we got to see what seven is. What do you guys think seven's going to be? Cylinder seven, send it. Two 
220. Cylinder seven is where it's at. If you're a perfectly running engine, you're hanging out with cylinder seven. <laughs> <laughs> just just so we know it ain't a fluke. Let's do that bad boy one more time. That was good. That was good numbers. Oh yeah. Yep. Cylinder seven's party cylinder, 220. All right, here we go. Here we go. I know I've said it already in this video, but I'll say it again. If you like this content, take, take some time right now, hit that like button, share with your friends, and subscribe. Because we need you guys to do those things so that we can keep doing this. Because it shows us that you know these videos are worth watching. You guys enjoy them. We love the AMG content. You know, we're watching everybody else's channels with AMG content. Shout out to Alex at Legit Street Cars, Max for the cool edits, um, and everybody who helps us. So, but please take some time. You can help us out too. Hit that like button, hit that share button, hit subscribe, and then comment that you've done all three of those in the comments, and I will personally thank you. What's the wager? Lunch. No, we already did lunch. Today. Lunch tomorrow. Lunch tomorrow. All right. All right. You guys here to hear either. Eight is worse than six, and I win, or it's better than six, and Rusty wins. Winner buys lunch tomorrow, and it's somewhere good. Yeah, I'd like to try one of those acai bowls we've been talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're hilarious. All right, guys. Well, that looks that looks super low to me. <laughs> Do it again. Uh, I don't know about you guys. That well, that says zero. <sighs> what did you say? One ten was your like number guess. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was two ten. Okay. Two ten, Rusty. Still correct. Still right. You won. So I was correct about the oil then. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, all that oil is is yeah. keeping the. Yeah, that's all that oil from cylinder six. All right, guys, those are the results. So if you had your wagers in, now's time to check your bets. All right, this is cylinder one on the other side. Look at all that freaking oil. When you see shiny like that, that is not good. But look at that. Jeez Louise. All right, go to the next one. Looking like this thing was experiencing some knock. A combustion stroke. Look at that. Might be hard to see on the camera, but it's pretty much some kind of wear or almost every cylinder we're seeing. And there she goes. Whew, look at that. Keep going. Yeah, you can see a significant amount of damage on that cylinder wall. Look at that. That is not good. That is definitely through the layer of silica. All right, let's move to compression testing. All right, guys, Rusty has us hooked into cylinder one. So we're going to do one through four. That's this bank right here. Let's get started. Go ahead, Rusty. All right, just about 210 on that one. All right, guys, we're doing cylinder two. Ready when you are, Rusty. All right, just under 210. All right, cylinder three. Again. Two oh five there. So so far two ten, two oh five, two oh five. What is cylinder four gonna be? Two ten for that one. So it looks like the entire engine is plus or minus five to ten percent other than cylinder six. So let's jump back to cylinder six. Let's use our old time oil squirt gun, squirt some oil in there and see if we can bump that compression up because there's still a chance that maybe there's uh, an injector issue, stuck up an injector. But with all the cylinder walls looking like they do, this thing's obviously worn out. 
and going to be pushing a little bit of oil in every cylinder. But I just want to see if we can bump that number up uh, for you know the sake of science, and we'll see we'll see what will happen. And this is my old Tommy oil squirt gun. I think every shop has one in their in their shop. What oil do we got in there? Do you remember? This is Liquid Molly 540. Okay. All right, we have a hose running into the cylinder, and Rusty is pumping some oil. How much do you put in? Uh, you want to put in about four capfuls. Yeah. Four capfuls. A tablespoon or two. Not much. Rusty has us hooked back up here. We got some oil in there. All right, that's about 75, 80. So it did bring up, it did bump, push the numbers up. Good again. About 80 again, 75, 80. She gone, she gone. That, let's all take a, and have a moment of silence for cylinder number six. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving cylinder six the life it deserved. And we hope you respect it up there. And hopefully we get a new cylinder six in here that is 220 like the rest of them. And God's word, amen. If you could continue to bless cylinder number seven. <laughs> cylinder six. So if, if you can just bless cylinder number seven to pick up the weight that cylinder number six needed to carry. All right, let's do some leak down on cylinder six. We'll do comparison between five and six just to see how it goes, but I want to see what six is right now. All right, guys, this is the OTC cylinder leakage tester. And this side, you hook up to pressurized air and you'll bump it up to 100. And this side, it will show you if there's any leakage or how many. You have this nice little chart here that shows you the numbers on here, the zero to seven. You look that up to percentage of leaking, one through seven. So you hook it into the same fitting that we use for the compression tester, and then you'll, there's a kink in the hose back there. Oh, is there no air on this side right now? That would have not kinked if there was air in that line. And it looks like somebody turned the compressor off for this side of the shop for the weekend. So we're gonna have to fire that back up. There she goes. So once we have air, we will be able to do the leakage tester. All right, we have air. Okay, that's not good. Usually this goes, they go up together. Now we play the where's the sound coming from game. Sounds like it's coming in this PCV tube right here. Yeah, yeah, but put that back on there. When you put it back on there. Yeah, put your hand right here. The P, it's coming up through the PCV and you can feel it blowing out. All right, well, let's tighten that up and send him on his way. So that is 90% uh, leak down. 88, all right. Just yeah, 88, whatever. So that is 88% leak down, 90% leak down, whatever you want to call it. That was hilarious. Do that little trick again. So that means it is 100% leaking past the piston and going into the crankcase, pressurizing the crankcase. I can feel it. There's a little PCV thing off the valve cover here. And this hose, I can feel it coming. I don't know if you can hear that. But that's it. That cylinder is done. Let's check uh, cylinder five that had good compression, just as comparison. And if you guys remember from my ML video, we did one of these on my ML and it was at 100%, 100%. So it's 0% leak down. All right, guys, so to do a cylinder leakage test, you need, it needs to be on the compression stroke and it has to be top dead center. So since we were at cylinder six, the next firing order is three because you want to go in firing order so you don't have to check comp compression stroke again. And we're just going to get the piston. Makes it easy to use the bore scope because then you can see it over the rise right there. And that is it. The next move, it's going to start falling. So we we're at top dead center, and now we can put in our hose and our cylinder leakage tester. What do you think, Rusty? I think. This side all had perfect compression. It all looked okay, <clears throat> just worn. I think at this point, I'm convinced he needs an engine. I think you're just in time to mention that because yeah. I think the final results of this is gonna be he needs an engine. <clears throat> I also forgot to show you this on the other side. When you're doing a cylinder leakage test, 
You want to take the Schrader valve out of the hose so that the air can just go straight through. So you want that Schrader valve in there during a compression test so it keeps the, the pressure. And on this, you want to take that Schrader valve out. This is this one's not really meant to be used on the passenger side. It's easier to use on the driver. No, I'm just kidding. They should make a left hand and right hand tester so you don't have to finagle the air all crazy. All right, here we go. See how it's good? They're going up almost together. That's more normal. That's what we like to see. And it looks like this one is about 10%. Eight. Actually about like six, no eight. About 8% 8 leakage. So that's, with how we've seen the condition of the, the cylinders, that's what we'd expect. It's not perfect, it's not beautiful, but it is, it is okay. Any, anything less than 10% leakage is considered normal. But with these, it's, they're usually perfect. Mer Mercedes doesn't mess around, this ain't no old Chevy 350. These are usually spot on, 100, 100, uh, barely any leak down until they get worn like this. And when we see leak down at all on these, it, they're usually burning some oil. It looks like all in all, we have one just done cylinder. So once the fire truck noises go away and stop, um, I will continue to talk. But anyway, guys, I think we have a dead cylinder, cylinder six. She's she's done for, there's no saving it, and we're gonna recommend an engine. With this harness being completely soaked in oil, you know, we're gonna recommend a harness, but usually a, a replacement engine will come with that. So, well, hopefully it will come with that, but we'll find out. But I would not suggest reusing this harness. I would not suggest reusing this engine. Um, it is too much gone wrong with it, unless we were going to fully sleeve it, which could be an option. I'll let you guys know what he decides, but this engine is DOA. What do you think, Rusty? Do you agree with my diagnosis? I think what we're gonna do is, I saw some of that the piston ring fixer in a can that's like $10, $12 at AutoZone. We're gonna get a can of that. What do you think, $150, $200 for a detail? And get this guy back on the road. We are not doing that. I can tell you that. We're, we're not doing that, but yeah. So your actual professional opinion? Um, I think piston ring broke on cylinder number six. It pushed all the oil to all the other cylinders, especially eight, which is why it's sealing so well. And uh, bad things. So we won't know the extent of the bad things unless we tear it down further. Which we could possibly do on film. Uh, it just depends what, what decision the customer goes with. If he wants to build this motor, then we will tear this whole thing down and we will price all that and put uh, some new sleeves in and some new upgraded pistons and rods. Or we'll, f we'll find a locally sourced, our boys have a, a AMG part out shop. Uh, I'll check in with them, see if they have a good M157, low mileage, uh, hopefully 14 or 15 uh, to where the timing chains and all that stuff's already upgraded. Now this, this engine being so, you know, old, the previous version of it, this engine's missing uh, several things. So it has the bad timing chains and it's missing the check valves behind the timing chains. So when you go to start this, there'll be slack in the chain and that's what stretches the chain too, is because every time you shut it off and it bleeds down oil pressure, the timing chain tensioner will back off. And when then it, when it starts back up, it has slack in the chain and you know pulls the chain real tight and the tensioner will, will slowly build up oil pressure again. Um, but the new versions in the block, and we've done this before, where we've replaced this, um, have a little check valve in there. And you take off the timing chain tensioner and you press in this check valve assembly and that updates the old one to the new style. Which we could do to these these heads if uh, if we go that route and we rebuild it, but I think we'll let you know. All right, guys. Well, if you like this video, you like the AMG content, you liked us poking around and finding what at what happened to this E63. And just to sum it up, cylinder six lost compression. The piston rings let go, which therefore takes that compression, puts it into the PCV system. Therefore, taking all the oil in the PCV system, pressurizing it, pushing it out every entranceway and hole it can find. It looks like the dipstick tube the oil cap, wherever it could find that pressure was releasing. That's what pushed the smoke everywhere and that's where all the oil went. And that's why there's no oil in the dipstick and all of that. So, issue, we found it, cylinder six. We hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give us a big thumbs up. Share with your friends. And as always, subscribe. Most importantly, leave a comment about my best friend Rusty in the comments.
Anthony, make sure you note uh, we need to order more our monster. All right, Rusty thinks it's gonna crank with the ECU unplugged with just the body side hooked up. I think it won't, so go ahead, Rusty. Fuck. Testing, testing, audio, video, testing. It's late at night in the evening and my hands are staying clean because I have dinner plans. Twin turbo, by turbo, AMG, M157. Twin turbo, by turbo, V5 bottom. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, checkers, not chess. Well, I Chinese chess, I guess. Chinese checkers. I don't know. I don't know. Chinese chess. It was like one of those. I thought it was like one of those cheap chess boards. You know, where there's like too many pawns. Bye, Rachel. Uh, anywhere else? Rachel's already leaving us for the day. Because we didn't get this one done fast enough. We had too much other stuff going on today. And now that I have nothing to film, it's actually quiet in here for once. No one's grinding and all the, no compressors running. So now, you can probably hear me better. Hey, quiet on set!